Hi, everyone. Welcome to another interview series with me. My name is Meher. I'm from Vancouver, BC. Today, I'll be interviewing Jacob Lebovitz. How are you doing, Jacob? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for joining us. So for those of you watching for the first time, my interview series is targeted for job seekers and employers. I know that finding a job is very stressful, and I'm here to help you asking questions for my guests in terms of how to be behave or how to stay motivated or how to find jobs these days. And I'm hoping that way that will be some, some kind of guidance. So stay tuned every week because I'll be interviewing every week different people. But today I'm trying to try, I'm going to try something different. In that sense, I usually ask my uh, guests one question at a time and I pose every question per day for the next five days. But today with Jacob, we're going to try answer the whole question in one format and post it that way. And if you like that format, I would like your comments. And if you don't like, we can go back to the old format. So uh, before uh, saying more, let's start with today's interview. All right. All right. So Jacob, uh, tell me more about yourself. I know that you are a speaker, uh, a people smart and storyteller. What else you can tell us about yourself? Well, um, I think everything really goes all together hand in hand. I'm a speaker because I'm a storyteller. I'm a storyteller because I am people smart and not to, you know, toot my own horn or anything, but the reason why that's the case is because I've been motivated my entire life to continue to progress and succeed as much as I can. Um, that said, I'm very, very thorough and very detail oriented. So because of that, that's where the storytelling came in and comes in because when I'm telling something over to somebody, um, I'm not going to put myself in the same sentence as greats, you know, like Stephen King or uh, Clive Barker, or, you know, just in case, um, you think that, (laughs) you know, I don't have that kind of an ego, at least not yet. But, um, you know, I, I do when I tell something over put it into a method and to say it in a way that it's a, that those people that hear it, that are listening, that I'm discussing with also are able to put themselves into that situation, into those shoes and to understand, you know, what, what it is that somebody else either experienced or may be experiencing as if they themselves are doing so. Um, and the only way really to be able to do that is to be extremely detail oriented even to a fault, you know, brutally honest, again, to a fault. Um, You know, I was always taught that it's better to uh, be honest and get in trouble than it is to be dishonest and get away with it. And, you know, therefore, you know, the thing that I focus the most on more than anything else is being genuine and being honest. Yeah. And I also like to, uh, to tell the audience that if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the comment section and we'll be more than happy to answer them afterwards. So in terms of the storytelling, Jacob, you mentioned that we always want to tell the story. I always feel that if we tell once upon a time, we always go to that Disney word, you know, that word. We always go to in our minds that word. We and think of fairy tales, exactly. Fairy tales, yeah. And I want to go from that perspective in terms of how can job seekers uh, use the storytelling technique when answering behavioral question in an interview or in another, in any settings, how do you think they can use that? That's actually, that's a great question. And it's also something that can be used very, very well. Um, A lot of times you'll get interviews and actually I'm, I'm saying this from both perspectives from somebody who has interviewed people and, you know, hired them as well as the side from somebody who has looked for a job and has been interviewed numerous times. So, you know, I, I sort of take, I take bits and pieces from everything also, again, with that detail orientation, right? (laughs) Um, but that said, when somebody asks you a question, um, when you're the interviewee, you can either answer with yes, no, maybe, or you can go off on a tangent, which seems like a tangent and seems to almost not answer the question at first, but in between questions, you're answering every single question to the point that they don't even have to ask questions because they're getting a read on you already. So for example, ask me a question. So uh, tell me about a time when you had difficulty with a coworker. 
Okay, so that I can actually answer with a story. There was actually, if you think about it, every single person that goes to any job, not everybody gets along. You know, they even say your best friend could be your absolute worst roommate. <laughs> um, but, you know, coworkers are not your best friends. Sometimes they become friends and sometimes they become very good friends and sometimes they even come, become, you know, your best friends. But until that point, there's always an awkwardness. And I do remember that there was one time that there was somebody who had sat across from me at, uh, at a prior uh, position that I had that we got along fine conversationally, but when he was on the phone, he talked so freaking loud. You could not even imagine. I mean, you know, I'm from New York and for me, it was loud. And, you know, when I would be on the phone with a customer and he would be on the phone with anybody <laughs> or talking to somebody next to him, l you know, literally the customer would start complaining, why are you talking while I'm on the phone? <laughs> so uh, the way that I dealt with that was, you know, again, there's three different ways that you could deal with something. You can either deal with it positively, negatively, or, you know, in ignorance, you know, and not necessarily ignorance in what's going on, but trying to ignore. Um, I took a fourth approach. I actually combined all three together, except it made him realize that, you know, he was doing something that wasn't annoying me necessarily, but was something that he needed to work on for himself by, you know, talking to him positively when he was speaking quieter by making him perhaps a little bit paranoid about others around when he was talking about personal mm -hmm. things with personal people um, by, you know, ignoring when I needed to. And, you know, when I knew that there was no chance that he was going to quiet down, you know, I would find a way to muffle my headset so that um, mm -hmm. the people on the other side were not getting upset by it because that would just make my job that much more difficult. But um, it ended up diffusing it because after a while, after it was probably about a month or two that he started really speaking a lot quieter because he was always concerned that somebody would hear as they're walking yeah. by and God only knows what he may say in, yeah. you know, in the wrong earshot. Um, he had realized that every now and then it would upset the people around him. And he realized that people were listening to him a lot more uh, intently when he was speaking quieter and when he wasn't shouting at them. Yeah. Yeah, that, I totally agree. Sometimes just having a, that mindset or a conversation with someone, telling them what's happening, maybe, maybe they don't realize that they're speaking loud. At the beginning, I was told that I use a lot of my hands when I was talking. So now I'm... Using hands is good. <laughs> I, I don't know. I use my hands. I like to use my hands. You know, it adds to body language. And that's yeah. also something that's good for interviews. Yeah, too. I agree. But I'm always, always cautious these days not, not to be over using my hands. <laughs> Okay. We all know, Jacob, that finding a job is very stressful and sometimes it takes a lot of time because I've been there. Uh, in terms of tips on staying positive while job searching, do you have any tips that might be useful to the audience that are trying to find jobs? Wow. That's, uh, there's a lot of answers to that. I guess it really depends on what, um, you know, what perspective you're looking at it from in terms of staying positive when dealing with family, when dealing with friends, when dealing with former coworkers, mm. when dealing with interviews, when, when going to multiple interviews or not getting responses. Um, there's so many different focuses that can be had. Um, but I think everything really comes down to one simple answer, which is just like, you know, just like you wake up in the morning and, you know, you're looking for a job one day, as long as you keep doing that, you'll wake up in the morning and you'll go to the job that you find, you know, there, there are jobs left and right. Let's be honest, you know, but how many of those jobs do you truly want? And would you truly feel good about doing mm -hmm. or, you know, have your self-worth and the value that you provide to be, to be you know, to be, uh, you know, appreciated. Um, those jobs don't come easily. Those jobs don't come commonly. Otherwise, everybody would have one and there'd be no yeah. such thing as a job or job market. You know, we don't do things when it comes to work 
um, because we just want to, because otherwise everybody would work for free. We do things because we're good at it or because we want to be good at it and we want to be proud of ourselves. And when you're searching, a lot of times the reason why it's taking long is not necessarily because everybody's saying no. It's more because deep down, even when you go for the interview, you've already decided this ain't for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I would also say that uh, it's coincident like yesterday when Lady Gaga won for her uh, Oscar for the best song, she said, when uh, when things got harder, it's hard work. It's, it doesn't come easier. And if you have a dream, we should fight for it. And we should be that should be our motivation. We should know our why, why we are doing what jobs we want to go. And I feel that should be our motivation, even if we get so many ne- uh, no's. Oh, but absolutely. If we know what we're doing. That will be our focus and direction. Of course. And, you know, and actually that's something different. That's motivation versus positivity. Positivity is whether you have motivation or not, you're looking at things optimistically. You're looking at things with a smile and you're looking forward to what the next day or that day is going to bring. Motivation, on the other hand, you don't have to be positive to be motivated. You could, your motivation could be your family. Your motivation could be your success, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be positive or happy while, you know, being motivated to succeed. Um, the positivity is is key to be thankful for what you have and to get something and to have something that you truly do want versus the motivation of jumping from one stone to another to another, which, you know, unfortunately these days is a very, you know, very difficult yeah. thing. You know, people laugh about the millennial culture, how, yeah. you know, they job hop. And I say they because I it's debatable whether I'm Gen X or millennial. Yeah. I guess in this case, I'll call myself Gen X just so that I don't, you know, paint the brush <laughs> on myself too. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I agree. And, uh, also as, and also as we human being, we always get affected in everything surrounding us. And uh, as I said, finding a job, it can be sometimes very difficult, but we need to exactly. achieve and we need to be, have a routine uh, things that makes us happy, not in exactly. computer eight hours applying for a job. We can go out, we can go to the gym, meet friends for a coffee, have conversation, and then do the job search. Right. There's, there's that as well. And also, you know, when it comes down to it, didn't anybody ever think that part of the reason why there's so much job hopping is because there's so many employers that are not, you know, retaining Retention is something that's a problem on the employer side, not an employee side. If they have a high turnover rate, that's a problem that the employer has in the way that they manage their companies and the way that they have their culture. And if it's a high turnover rate of people succeeding, then that's also a problem because that means that the employer is spending so much time and money on training somebody and they're going elsewhere just because they're going elsewhere and somebody else is taking their hard work and, you know, their training. Because again, that motivation is there to succeed. But if somebody gets trained and they don't succeed in the place that they are and they don't feel that it's going fast enough, which in this digital age is everything is instantaneous. You know, Mm -hmm. you, you blink and what you ordered is here. You know, you want to watch something. You don't have to go to remember Blockbuster. (laughs) You don't have to go to a store. You go onto your phone or you go onto your tablet or you go on your TV or your PS4 or Xbox, but you know, the Xbox that's blasphemous. So, (laughs) Um, yeah. And I would say for the audience, is there any tip that you, what's useful for you when you were job searching? And another thing is that what questions you were asked during interviews that you want an answer? Maybe we can come up with another video answering those questions. So please leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe the channel. So Jacob, let's continue now that uh, in terms of after doing the interview, there's this wait period, you know, either you're going to get the call, congratulations, you got the job or- Or you won't get a call. (laughs) Or sometimes, you know, you get an email saying, thank you for coming, but unfortunately we're going with another person. When that happens at that moment, I'm wondering how you would, how job seekers can overcome that rejection because they, they've invested some time preparing for this interview, you know, applying, phone interview, and then face to face. You spend some time, maybe two weeks or three weeks, depending on the, how the recruitment is at. So in your opinion, how can job seekers can overcome that rejection and then have a reset and be stay, stay positive and restart applying for jobs? Honestly, it's going to sound a little bit... Um odd 
but apply for another job immediately on the day that you do the interview. After you do the interview, apply for a different job elsewhere so that you already have something churning in the works that you feel, okay, this one didn't work out, but it's okay because I already applied to this other one. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a good way to not, not feel like you're putting all your eggs in the basket. Yeah. So not focusing a lot of time, what happened, what can I have done differently? Just move on. Next one. Right. You know, you're throwing enough against the wall to see what uh, ends up sticking, you know, yeah. but hopefully just to the wall and what you're throwing is what you want and not just because uh, you're desperate. Yeah. But I would say just have some time, you know, uh, every, every interview is an opportunity to learn something new for, of yourself, maybe your questions, you know, maybe you could have done differently, but don't spend a lot of time, maybe 15, 20 minutes and then start applying to other jobs. That will be the suggestions, right? Right, exactly. And, you know, don't, uh, don't dwell on what's the reason, you know, because the reason doesn't matter. The reason is because you're better than them. The reason is because they don't understand. They don't realize how good that they could have had with you. Because if you didn't care enough to want to even consider giving them what you have to offer, you wouldn't have even walked through that door to begin with. You would not have hit apply. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, again, you know, if the interview went poorly, if you haven't responded to questions the way that they should have been responded to, and you knew that at the time, mm -hmm. then deep down, you didn't even want that position to begin with. You need to be prepared for an interview. Correct. So moving on for my last question for you, Jacob, is social media. We all know that social media, personal branding, creating content, these are some of the trends that are happening these days. As a job seeker, or even if you, are, you already have a job, but for your personal brand, social media presence, posting, blogging, commenting, those are things that uh, recruiters or employers are also searching these days. Like, who is Jacob on LinkedIn? What has he done? Is there any tweet or anything? <laughs> Just to have a sense of this person who is applying. Uh, in your opinion, like, if someone is not used to social media or using social media, do you have any tips like how should they start or where should they start or in general, what tips you have in terms of social media and job seekers? Oh, man. I hope you have about an hour of time cut out for this. <laughs> we don't, but um, we, you can sort the top five things maybe in your mind. <laughs> it's, that's actually a really tough question to answer because it really depends. It depends on what that person is looking for job-wise and position-wise and industry-wise. And you know, what the demographics are of those industries and the company that they're going to, you know, some companies like things to be very quiet, you know, Apple likes things to be silent, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Microsoft likes to throw everything that they possibly can out into the news to say, look at what we're doing, look what we're doing, you know, look at me, mommy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but what I would say is if somebody feels that they're not on social media and that they need to be because that would be beneficial for their searching, then what I would recommend to begin with more than anything above and beyond is to not turn it into a complaint board. If you turn it into a complaint board, people will just see you as somebody who likes mm -hmm. to complain. And if you like to complain, that means that you more than likely don't work well with others. And if you don't work well with others, it doesn't make a difference how much money you could bring in yeah. if you're going to run your coworkers out. That's yeah. number one. Number two, um, don't give in to the peer pressure bullshit. Um, you know, there's so many different things that happen on social media. You see all of the mainstream videos that go around that nobody has made their own, that it wasn't original. It wasn't their own original thought. And that's actually two and three put together, which is, you know, don't subscribe to the group think and be original because if you subscribe to the group think, then there's nothing innovative about you. There's nothing unique. There's nothing that shows the passion that you have for, original thought and critical thinking. So, you know, you got to be able to do your own thing and to be yourself while still not turning it into a complaint board. Because again, you could be upset, you could be miserable, but just because you are, or just if you are, doesn't mean that the world has to see it. You know, every now and then, 
Um, even even singers catch colds, but you don't see anything about that on the news, right? <laughs> Um, that's numbers two and three, I said, right? Yeah. Number four, I would say the most important thing is surround yourself with like-minded people and with better-minded people. Yeah. Um, you don't want to surround yourself with the, with the people that are doing things the wrong way because you're going to, by proxy and directly also, do things the wrong way. Yeah. And they're not going to suffer for it. They don't care. If they cared, they wouldn't do it the wrong way. Yeah. But if you do the wrong thing the wrong way, you're going to suffer. Your family's going to suffer. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you have to make sure that you keep yourself away from. Yeah. And number five is avoid burnout. And I could yeah. say that as somebody who has been burnt out and honestly is kind of social media burnt out right now, to be totally blunt. Yeah. <laughs> um, you Sometimes know, it's overwhelming. Sometimes it's overwhelming. So many things you have to check up on LinkedIn, what everyone is doing, and then you want to tag, or you want to make comments, and then you go on Twitter, right? retweet, oh, I like this one, you know? Sometimes <laughs> it's overwhelming, and, and those are great tips. I would say, do whatever you feel comfortable. Don't be pressured, but I like surrounding yourself with positive people because those, those are, those are, that's important. Social burnout, sometimes just put it away your phone for a few hours you know, over the weekend, or something that makes you calm down and go back to the game again. Right. And, and here's another thing in that regard as well. I mean, there are times that life doesn't get in the way because life is the reason for everything, your life and your loved one's lives and, you know, all of that. That is your reason. That's why you do things. But at the same time, you know, there is a lot of times or sorry, there are a lot of times that in that, that your life is what you're burnt out with, especially when you're job seeking and when you are and when you're feeling down and when you're feeling negativity and when you can't bring yourself to say the right thing, mm -hmm. that actually is somewhat of a therapeutic uh, burnout when it comes to social media because if you are smart enough to know to keep your mouth shut, yeah. then you're already one step ahead of the game. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. And with that, Jacob, my interview comes to an end. Uh, again, thank you for taking the time to ask you my questions. And for the audience, as I mentioned during the talk, if you have any questions like what questions you want to be answered during an interview or what tips that work for you to stay positive or motivated or continue job searching, please put it in the comments. I'll be more than happy to uh, to to make videos about it or maybe uh, and answer them for sure. And uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, reach out to Jacob's uh, LinkedIn profile, reach out to him if you have any questions to him and tune in to, uh, next week with another interview, uh, interview series. Till then, have a great week. Bye everyone. Take care.